Welcome back to the show. November is osteoporosis month and Dr. Kate Rayom joins us. She's going to help us debunk some myths today. Welcome to the show, Kate. Great to have you here. And before we get to some of those myths, Kate, let's talk first of all about osteoporosis. What exactly is it? Mm -hmm. This is a condition that affects millions of Canadians in which the bones lose their mineral density. Essentially, they become more porous, weaker, and prone to breaking. And both men and women can experience fractures due to osteoporosis, which can be quite serious. Do we know what causes it, uh, Kate? Well, there are a number of contributing factors. Some are okay. nutritional, some are hormonal. Uh, genetics play a certain role, uh, but a lot of the factors are things that we can influence with a healthy lifestyle. All right, well, we're going to bust some myths today. You sent along some of these myths. So let's start, first of all, with, with diet. A lot of people feel that, you know, diet doesn't necessarily play much of a, a role when it comes to, to preventing or, or even treating osteoporosis. Um, is there any truth to that? That is definitely a myth. Okay. You know, a nutritious diet is the foundation for healthy bones. Uh, and not just calcium-rich foods that we may think of, but protein-rich foods. Our bones are made up in part by protein that for, for, you know, forms the matrix that holds the minerals in our bones. So we want to be enjoying lots of uh, protein-rich foods. Specifically, the protein in the bones is collagen. You know, I've got some trusty bone broth here, which is a source of dietary collagen calcium we always hear is, is a big one when it comes to you know you know you're just talking about bones there um, can we get enough calcium out of the foods we eat and, and if not I, I guess are, are supplements the way to go Kate well calcium is actually relatively easy to get into the diet for most people People. Now, individuals with low bone density may need more, and so a supplement may be indicated at that time. And so it's something that you want to speak to your doctor about in terms of where your bone health is at. Uh, we saw some, some foods, you know, just pop up there, but, you know, what are some of the foods that we should, we should be eating that, that, that have calcium in it that we should turn our attention to? Well, obviously, dairy foods. Uh, right. These are wonderful sources of calcium, and they also often contain other nutrients that are important for calcium metabolism. So bones aren't made up just of calcium. They have magnesium in them. They need vitamin D for calcium absorption, and my favorite nutrient, vitamin K2. Uh, this will help guide calcium into the bones and away from other soft tissues. So there's lots of calcium-rich foods like... Uh, a Gouda cheese here, Brie, Jarlsberg, and they, in addition to being a source of calcium, are a great source of vitamin K2, so lots of tasty options. I was going to say, yeah, and absolutely delicious, which makes it a lot easier for all of us. I think a another myth, and this is probably the biggest one that I've always heard, is that we don't necessarily have to worry about osteoporosis un until we get older. You know what? Although osteoporosis only develops in the later years, we in fact grow our bone density during our teens and 20s and in, even up to age 30. And so in fact, what we do in those years for optimizing bone density will sort of set the stage for a lifetime of healthy bone. So although it's not something we need to worry about usually in the earlier years, those decades are when we build our bones. I've often heard it being called sort of a, a, a silent killer. So so is it is it difficult to know whether whether you have it is, is it uh, i mean how is it diagnosed exactly Mm -hmm. Osteoporosis is one of these silent conditions in that technically it doesn't cause any pain. Okay. Thinning bones or declining bone mass isn't painful. Now, if you break something or if you have, say, uh, you know, compression fractures happening in the bones, yes, that absolutely will cause pain. So often people don't know until they either have a bone scan or break something. Uh, but certainly if you have osteoporosis and you're in pain, don't assume that's normal. Get it checked out. So if you, if you don't feel pain, I mean, what what's, could be some of the signs that you should look for? 
Well, this is a tricky thing about osteoporosis. Typically, there are no signs. Okay. Um, you know, if somebody is, is losing height or, or curving over, shrinking over, that can be a sign of something that's going on. But many people will have osteoporosis and not experience that. So typically, especially for women after menopause, a bone scan just to check, even get a baseline level of where the bones are at is important. And if you have a family history, pay more attention to that too. Um, here's, here's the last one we'll look at. And I find this often often too with with people that have you know a, a get a bad back injury of some kind um, osteoporosis I've heard the same thing where people stop exercising and the exercise isn't you know you, you shouldn't do any exercise because you don't want to make it worse this is a myth as well right Absolutely, yes. And there's this um, maybe thinking that, oh, if my bones are fragile, I should avoid uh, physical exercise. In fact, the opposite is true. Of course, you want to clear any exercise regime with your doctor. But in right. fact, the more you do weight-bearing exercise, the muscles pull on the bones, and that causes them to become stronger. So it's really important. Of course, you don't want to be engaging in activities that increase your risk of falling. You know, maybe figure skating is out. Right. Uh, but other <laughs> strength training exercises are important. Uh, outside of, of uh, weight training exercise, any other types of exercises? I'm just trying to think of, you know, resistance or, or yoga, things like that. That's right. Yoga or things that even just walking, you know, you're bearing your weight when you're walking, um, but you also want to focus on uh, increasing muscle strength in addition to helping the bones. That also helps to prevent falls. Uh, so that's important too. But anything that you enjoy that involves weight bearing. Okay. Uh, and so, um, you know, building your muscles, that right. helps. Kate, always a pleasure having you. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll be right back after this.